Welcome to season two of the Energy Upgrade podcast. I'm your host, Vanessa, master biohacker and successful entrepreneur. In season one of the Energy Upgrade, you got to have a taste for my obsession in all things health, energy, entrepreneurship, spirituality, and biohacking, or how to take radical responsibility in living a life by design. As a certified health coach, integrated health practitioner, kinesiologist, and seasoned entrepreneur who built and sold a seven-figure business, I want to dive deeper in this season too. After healing myself from burnout, from my health falling apart, my hormones leaving my body, I'm here to share everything I wish someone had told me. Every day, I have the incredible opportunity to be mentoring women and supporting them in becoming true magnetic energy bombs. I'm helping them remember who they were all along. It's so powerful that I want to take you in on the journey, almost as if you were a fly on the wall. You'll find that I'm not your typical health coach and I'm not your typical business coach either. I'm somewhere in between with a lot of spirituality sprinkled in there. This podcast is a sacred place where I come and share with you things that will bring you a high return on investment because yes, I'm all about ROI. Life goes fast and if I can show you a shortcut or two, I'll have succeeded at bringing you value. Thank you for being here. Let's go. Your time is now. Your energy is your life force. You want to be able to magnetize your wildest dreams. A level detox is the fastest way to start healing. You can and you will. Welcome back to another episode of the Energy Upgrade. This is Vanessa Grutman, your host, and today I have a very special guest with me. I'm excited to welcome Marjorie Tong from um, Juna Day. And Juna Day is a very interesting company. In fact, it's the first and only activewear company that shields you from cell radiation. So you've heard me talk about EMF lots before. So we're going back there. Thank you so much, Marjorie, for being here. Thank you for having me, Vanessa. Happy to be here. Yeah. So you're joining me from sunny California. (laughs) Well, we're actually having a hailstorm right now. So not quite. (laughs) Okay. Well, maybe it's just in my dreams. (laughs) It usually is sunny, actually. This is very rare. (laughs) And we had the pleasure to actually meet in person at the biohacking conference back in um, earlier in June, 2023. And we, um, yeah, it was so interesting to hear about your story. And I thought definitely our listeners could benefit from hearing about all the great things you are putting out in this world and the important message that you are sharing. So maybe do you want to start by telling me how you got so passionate about shielding ourselves from EMF radiations and 5G towers and cell phones and all the things? What got you there? Yeah, so... um... I was working a corporate job for about 15 years. And of course, when COVID hit and I was suddenly at home working eight hours a day with a laptop on my lap, and um, it didn't take long for me to develop some very weird health um, symptoms. And um, I went to the doctor to find out what was going on with me and, you know, ran the tests and did all that. And of course, walked away with no answers. Um, You know, why was I having 40 minute long panic attacks? Why could I not focus long enough to write an email? Um, I was having aches in my hands and fingers and tingling in my face and, um, my sleep was so disruptive and I, I just I couldn't figure out what was going on. So, um, like I did, you know, back in 2015, when I was trying to figure out what was going on with my health, I kind of did the same thing. Um, I started just researching everything I could. And I had remembered back in 2015 coming across, um, an article about the potential health effects of, of EMF. And at that time I was really focused on what I was eating and my skincare and cleaning products and cleaning up all that stuff Mm -hmm. that at that time I didn't dive into the EMF. Um, so I thought back to that and 
thought, well, you know, I'm sitting with a laptop on my lap. What maybe that has something to do with it. And, and lo and behold, that's, that's what I discovered. I um, started seeing a ton of research and alarming stuff that, um, you know, really made me um, think about what was going on. So I learned how to make changes at home. So of course I got the laptop off my lap and, you know, learned that wiring it with an ethernet cord and shutting off the Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, was very helpful. Turning off the Wi-Fi at night, um, putting my cell phone on airplane mode and turning off the Bluetooth as much as possible. Um, and then I, I bought a, a consumer grade RF meter, you know, which measures mm -hmm. the radio frequency levels um, in my home. So I just walked around my home trying to, um, you know, find all the little hidden exposures. And that was eye opening too, um, because in my daughter's room, right where her pillow was, um, the readings on the meter were off the charts mm -hmm. and I couldn't understand why. And on the other side of the wall where she slept was a Roku transmitter. Um, and it was, just, and you know, that's plugged in 24 hours, seven days a week. And it was just pumping out the radiation. And as soon as I unplugged it, the levels went down to very safe levels. And that night was the first night in a very long time. She didn't wake up in the middle of the night and come up to our room. So. Oh, right. I, mean, I see that all the time. Yeah. Thank yeah. you for sharing your story. But yeah. so you decided to, so what next? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, I when you have this kind of information, I, I think you can relate that um, you feel a responsibility to share it mm -hmm. and um, offer a solution. And so um, I ended up stepping away from my job and deciding that I was going to make the solution for um, women that will help them feel and look like themselves and operate in this connected world and still be able to shield themselves because the products I was finding at the time weren't suited for me. I, I didn't, you know, they weren't designed for me. The, the fabrics weren't right for me. I just, um, and it was stuff I, I didn't want to wear outside yeah, of the house. No, most of the time it's, it's, <laughs> it's not pretty. Not yeah. sexy at all. <laughs> Not sexy. I was like, well, what? you know, we, yeah, I'm, I'm a scrunchy mom, you know, <laughs> I'm very interested, you know, I'm passionate about health and wellness, but I really like fashion and good design and style. And I, I wanted that fashionable solution, um, that I could still, you know, feel protected in and, and like myself. So, um, that's why I decided to start June day. And I, <laughs> I started the process, not even sure I, it, it, it could be done. It was one of these just, well, I'm going to, you know, contact as many manufacturers, talk to as many people as I could to try to figure out this solution. And, Finally, um, you know, I worked with a woman who got it and we, we developed this amazing, the belly band was first. We developed this amazing belly band that's just this seamless solution. It's slippery smooth. It can be worn under anything. Um, your dresses don't get caught on it when you lift up your shoulders. <laughs> and, um, you know, that was really what made the most since covering this pregnant belly, um, when, you know, you're on your phone, you're at your laptop. Um, and then from the belly band, um, we were able to, to branch out and do other styles. Um, and the reason I, I really wanted to focus first on the pregnant belly is because, you know, in my research, 
um, there, there are a lot of studies that were alarming. Um, Mm -hmm. but I think one of the most, um, glaring things that stood out, particularly with a, a pregnant belly is that, um, radiation absorbs at a higher rate with more fluid, the, the larger, the volume of fluid, the larger the absorption rate Mm. of radiation. And so when you think about a pregnant belly at about 34 weeks, you're carrying about 20 fluid ounces in your belly alone. And you don't have, um, you know, like your skull, you don't have the bone covering your belly, which doesn't absorb radiation Mm -hmm. at the same rate as fluids do. Um, and so it just seemed paramount that that was going to be the area that not only is the most frequently exposed to this intense close contact radiation from your cell phone and laptop, but also you're full of fluid and absorbing this radiation at, you know, a higher rate. So, um, that that's really why that belly band was so important to start with. Um, and so now we've taken kind of that model, turned it into a maternity legging. So you can do the same thing. You can still have your legging, you can have your shielded pocket and you have your belly protected. And and yeah. And so we now incorporate all our styles. You have this shielded belly panel over your belly, Um, again, we're doing targeted areas because these are the areas that are most closely exposed to this, this close contact device radiation. You know, we don't text from behind our back. So, you know, we're not getting that, that super intense exposure. Now, you know, I think what's beyond this handheld wireless device exposure, which is, was very high and very tense. Of course, we're also exposed to ambient EMF exposure on a daily basis, more so if you live in the cities or, you know, work in a building that has antennas on the the roof and and whatnot. Um, So there are spacesuits that will protect you from all radiation. <laughs> yeah. But no one wants to wear that. No one wants to wear it. And and um what we can do in terms of the environmental ambient EMF are make a lot of changes like I did at my home. Mm-hmm. So you know there are things you can do at home to decrease that environmental exposure. Um so with Juna Day, it's really thinking about, you know, we're on the go. We live in a connected world. I have aging parents that I need to be in contact with. I have kids. I need to be in contact. I can't, I don't have the luxury of living on airplane mode. No, it, 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 it's just not, it's not realistic. realistic. No. Yeah. So, you know, that's, why the garments are designed the way they are for that close contact, you know, wireless device Mm -hmm. radiation. And I have to say, you know, you have this one, um, um, one piece and it's so beautiful. It's stunning. (laughs) Um, and I love how you say, you know, airplane mode activated, you know, it's just, it's these, it's this wonderful active wear that you can wear on a plane where we get a lot of radiations or anywhere and it looks good, it fits good. And you feel really good pregnant or not, because the truth is you weren't pregnant when you felt all these symptoms. Right. And I, I really love your story because it makes it so real as we were talking about before offline, you know, I really commend your courage in leaving you know, your secure nine to five kind of corporate job behind and taking this leap of faith into really a passion project and really being um, really moved by the fact that, okay, you know, this is people need to know about this. And this is your fire. This is what got you to enough motivation to be brave and make this big leap. And look at you now, like really building this beautiful brand and, and sharing your message. But of course you're up against an invisible enemy. And it's really hard because most people, when we talk about EMF, think that we're making stuff up, 
you know, conspiracy theories or, you know, tinfoil hat. We talked about that. Right, right. Uh, but I, I really appreciate your story because you actually had very, very, very important symptoms. Yeah. Nobody I, wants to have 40 minute panic attacks or like tingling hands or, you know, aching joints. Nobody wants to, to have that, but this is a conversation that needs to happen more and more because this is what it does. And I'm going to link back in the show notes, the episode I did in length about EMF and, and actual impact on the body. But like you said, it's very alarming and it's alarming the fact that this information is not readily available. You literally have to dig almost in the black uh, interweb to find information. Um, Yet the data is so, so clear. So, and even when we think about cancer rates increasing and the impact of that, and these 5G towers that are popping up everywhere, Um, Like you've mentioned, there's one at the end of your street now. And gosh, those are the things we have no control over. And they don't give you a choice. You don't get to vote whether they go up. And uh, the worst part about the tower at the end of my block, it's right next to a school. It's, It's towering over the field where the kids run around at recess, which I think is criminal. It absolutely. And, and to your point, you know, the symptoms, the physical symptoms I had, like, clearly I'm feeling this. So I know that there is a physical, biological effect of this. Totally. But so many people, aside from the research that's done, I mean that, and then there's the research, but, you know, so many people I think are experiencing the effects, but have no idea. I had no idea. And the, you know, system, uh, thankfully more and more functional practitioners are becoming aware and educated and, um, you know, are, are understanding how they can help their, um, their patients. But, um, like me going to a a traditional Western, no, 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 uh, no. no. I got no no answer. It's just a bottle of antidepressants. (laughs) And it's like, you know, it, it's just for people who are, more sensitive than I am. I mean, they are hypersensitive people out there, which it, it, it's very difficult for them to operate in, in in a city in the outside world because mm-hmm. they're so sensitive to it. Um, but I think there are a lot of people who are feeling it, but they don't understand that it's it it could be from the EMF, from the cell phone radiation, from all this exposure. Um, that they're having because no one's going to tell them that right now. And like I said, it's an invisible enemy. Yes. You know, you don't smell it. it. You don't see exactly. it. Yeah. Um, I I did the same thing as you. Um, a few years back, I purchased a little um device to read. Um, like yeah, that meter to read all the frequencies, and I actually had my daughter do the test with me. So we went through the entire house, and it was so amazing to see through her eyes through her eyes because I really wanted her to have the awareness yeah. um and you know she made that a little school project and it was so cool but yeah like even just any electrical outlet also has some and my daughter the reason why I wanted her to do that is because I know I've always known she's more s- sensitive to it and like you said some people are more sensitive some people are less I think it probably has to do also with, I often refer to the rain barrels. So the amount of toxins that are already in your body, Um, but everybody is impacted. That's for sure. Whether or not you're feeling the impact every day, it might take longer to see the impact. Um, But I know she was, and, and that's why for us, it became non-negotiable. Like we have a timer on our Wi-Fi. We have, um, I was telling you before, um, my laptop is plugged in into an Ethernet cable. It's like a hundred feet cable that goes down to our router in the back room in the basement. It's like hidden far away. And I have this taped on my hardwood floor and through my <laughs> living room. And you know, most people would be like, You're crazy. And um, I'm I sit very well with that label now. And <laughs> I don't care because I don't want, I'm, I run an online business. I'm a hundred percent of the time in front of a device. 
And so for me, if I can try to shield, if I can have control where I can, I, I will make those decisions. Yes. And that's, and that's where I appreciate what you're doing because back to what you said, we, we can't shut it off. Unfortunately, our lifestyle now is done in a way that we are, you know, our businesses are online and that's just the nature of it. So I appreciate, you know, entrepreneurs like you who come out with innovative products that are there to support this lifestyle, but also make sure that we're not, our health and wellness is not suffering. Um, sure. Are you, are you launching a kid's line soon? <laughs> No, no, no. I'm, I'm focusing on women. Um, I think through, um, women through moms, especially, um, we are the ones who can educate and protect our children. Um, I, I'm not in the business of kids products. I think that's a whole arena that, um, oh, for sure. It's, it's yeah. Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult, but you know, yeah. like you mentioned, unfortunately now they, the amount of exposure they get at school, like yeah. I, it, like every time I go to the school and we have, we are in a small village where I live, where we, we have, we are 1200 people in our village and in the school there's 90 kids. Okay. So we're so lucky because it is very small and it's more traditional, but they still have these gigantic screens that make up the majority of the wall that and right. that's that's what they learn on and it's on, on all the time and the wi-fi is like blasting through that um and you know the other day my my son showed me his classroom and he was so excited to tell me he was fr front row like the first one right in front of the tv and i i was just you know trying to breathe i'm like okay <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised if in a few years from now, and I don't think we're too far off, you know, you've referred to the word criminal before, but I think there's going to be a lot more awareness and hopefully we're going to have a bit more control on the, that kind of exposure because, and we know in high school, teenagers are a hundred percent of the time on yeah. their laptops. And that's where, that's how they're learning now. And that's when, you know, the, your youthful reproductive parts are, you know, developing and we're, we're born with, you know, the set of eggs that we're born with and, um, it, they're worth protecting as much as we can from all sorts of environmental exposures. And, um, you know, it, it in terms of schools and kids, um, so what we what we do, um, devices are only for when we travel. Um, yes, and same here. if they are using a device, it has to be on airplane mode with the Bluetooth turned off. Yep. So everything has to be downloaded ahead of time. We don't use devices in the car because cars are like metal microwaves, you know, mm -hmm. driving the street. If the, the devices are in there, always searching for a signal, they're always working. Um, and it, as far as schools go, parents can always say, you know, that we have choices. You, you can opt out of tech time. You can tell the teacher, make sure they're on airplane mode if they're doing this. If they're using devices in the classroom, make sure it's sitting on the desk and they're sitting in a chair away from it. Mm -hmm. Don't let them lounge around on the, the couches with it in their lap. Um, you know, suggest that in tech rooms, I know some some schools have like computer labs, you know, where all the yes. The, are set up for the kids to sit at. Why are those labs? The yes. the connection's going to be more reliable. And you know, it's it's a win-win. Exactly. And so as long as we as parents are talking about this and speaking up and educating, I, I mean it, it puts yes, it puts the burden on us to educate places where we think that they should already know this stuff mm -hmm. because you know, the safety of our children are in their hands during the school day. Um, but it, it's still not widely accepted as a problem. Um, 
so, um, you know, the more that we can talk about it and educate our educators, you know, that's, yeah, exactly. so that, that will, um, always create change. Mm-hmm. You know, mom, moms are pretty powerful. <laughs> Yeah, no, I <laughs> totally. And that's, that's really the message here is you have more control than you think. Um, mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's what you're offering with your product. Um, there's, you know, um, pr- companies like I know, um, they like that make covers for iPads or, you know, even blankets that you can put on your lap and I know I I have those blankets and even in front of a smart TV, when my kids are watching a movie on, on a Saturday morning, they're under that blanket, (laughs) but for them, it's, you know, it's perfect because they want to be cozy under a blanket. So they don't really care if it's that one or another one. Um, but it requires us to think ahead and always have that solution oriented mind, but you're right because when they are tiny, they are developing at all levels, including their brains. And we see so many behavioral issues. And um, and often all you have to do is remove those tablets and, you know, really check in with the screen time, feed them whole food, and you see all that go away. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. Less is more. Back to basics yeah. with kids, you know? Yeah. Well, and I came across this alarming study that talked about um, the effects of Wi-Fi radiation on pregnant. Um, it was it was a, a rodent study, so it was uh, pregnant mice, and then the neurological effects of the offspring of the mice that were exposed to the radiation and they were finding, um, neurodegenerative, um, symptoms of the offspring. And when we think about the rise in ADHD and autism and all these sorts of things that our kids are experiencing, which are always a symptom, not, excuse me, not always a symptom, but what we're seeing is that all of these environmental factors from glyphosate and mm-hmm. you know, polluted water and et cetera, et cetera, um, you know, having this one more toxic exposure is, is, you know, it's filling up the bucket before the babies are born when they're, you know, infants, when they're children. I mean, it's, it's almost like, you know, they're not giving room to breathe. They don't have a, have a chance at a toxin free beginning. And so when I read studies like this, it's, it's just, you know, tells me that it it's always best to remove as many toxins as possible, including this EMF as an environmental toxin, it's going to lessen the load, not only for the mom, and, you know, the developing reproductive organs of, of teenagers and youth, but, you know, for these babies and young children, it, it just, um, you know, why not take that exposure away if you can? Totally. And that, that's, I think how we should end is like, this is worth you exploring, you know, if you're listening and you're feeling, oh my God, this is another thing. Places where you can start is definitely like no cell phones next to your head when you're sleeping. That's always to me, that's like the first, first place where you can take action. And I see my clients sleep, like literally change overnight by just doing that. So please, no cell phones. I always say, you know, plug it on the opposite wall or even better in the end suite or even better leave it in the kitchen on airplane mode and you know you'll you'll see it the next day no problem um people right. often will say well i need it for my alarm and i always say well just go back to buying this like nine dollar old school battery operated alarm clock because then there's no emf right. um because what that cell phone is doing next to your head while you're sleeping is it's interrupting your body's ability to go into that parasympathetic mode. So it's disrupting that, that rest and digest process and suppresses the melatonin production. So 
of course, your sleep, you're going to be waking up multiple times. You're never going to wake up fully rested because your body has been essentially fighting off that, that bombardment all night long of that phone, just pinging, looking for the, the signal all night long. So yes, it makes a difference. Try yeah, it. <laughs> you're right. I mean, the body at night is supposed to be one thing, healing and rejuvenating. And if we if it can't do that, we're just not going to feel good. And people that don't have energy, like this is such an easy place to start. So listeners, let's all agree, no more phones next to our heads. And then next is really looking, what can I have actually wired in? Like, do I have an ethernet cable or anything like that? And also really being mindful of Bluetooth, like you said, um, it's mind boggling again, like the things that we have you know, the speakers and this and the tablet that are always searching and that, yeah, the AirPods. Oh, right so next go to your back brain. To, yeah, AirPods are, yes. So my good. husband um, has fallen asleep on occasion with those awful things in his ears and has woken up a couple times with these weird lumps on the side of his ear. Mm-hmm. No explanation other than he had those in his ears all night yeah. long. So, Inflammation for sure. Yeah. So, yeah, so go wired, wired headphones, <laughs> go back to basics. Yes. Um, you know, I, I always say if you can avoid any smart things like smart light bulbs, smart, whatever, like it's crazy yeah. now the amount of smart things we have. So avoiding those as much as possible, going back to, you know, dumb home. We want a dumb home, uh, not our home. I want a dumb home. <laughs> totally. I love that. When we did our reno here in this house, the electrician was like, okay, so, you know, where do I put this and that? I'm like, no, 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 no. We're going with like basic incandescent <laughs> light yes. bulbs. Um, mm-hmm. No, nothing else. And he was like, I, I can't even get those anymore. Yeah. I had to yeah. special order um, mm-hmm. like, and I just bought them by the case. Cause I was like, what if they just get rid of them. Cause anyway, so that's another, that's, loop. that's so another that's rabbit hole. I, I totally. Yes. So yes. Dumb homes, whatever. <laughs> yeah. So you're really looking at, out at your Bluetooth signal, like just click on your Bluetooth, just see everything that's there and de- like remove it, remove it. So I often go and clean it up to make sure there's nothing there. And, um, those are, and then of course, you know, investing maybe in, um, you know, a June a day piece or something where wherever you're, if you're traveling or where you're going to places where you can't control, you'll still be fashionable, still in style, but you'll feel protected. And especially if you are pregnant and listening to this, then absolutely, um, you know, look into a belly band at the bare minimum. This is absolutely needed. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the way I wear June a day, um, well, I'm wearing the bodysuit right now. Um, but uh, so it's so painful for me now to carry a cell phone on my body, just holding it or keeping it in a pocket. So I have to have a shielded pocket if I'm going to wear it. So I wear the unitard, the one piece with a pocket like when I'm hiking, because I need to be still be reached, but I need to, ha- you know, I need to have my phone on me. Or if I'm wearing a fanny pack at Disneyland and I've got my phone, same thing. I have to have my phone on to get be reached. But as long as I'm wearing that fanny pack over the belly panel, again, I'm protected. So these are pieces that really work into many um, you know, times in your life, just every day. And that's what I wanted. Just the seamless option where you don't have to really worry about it. It's on, you're on the go, easy solution. Yes. Yes. Less is more easy is better. So thank you so much for really pouring your heart and soul into this, this mission, because I feel like it is a mission. It's not easy. You're up against big players, but you know, I love how you're doing it. Um, so thank you for, for what you're offering to the world. And if ever you're curious to, um, maybe purchase a piece of June a day, I, th- I think we're going to offer a special, a special code. Uh, we'll put that in the show notes. Um, but where can people find you? Uh, you can find us, find us at June That's J U U N A D A. <laughs> ADAY.com and on Instagram, J U U N A D A Y. Um, and then 
email us hello at junaday.com. We'd love to hear from you. Yeah. Awesome. I'll put all of those in the show notes. Thank you so much for this conversation. We could literally go for hours, right? We're, no. I think we're both very passionate about this topic because it matters because we've seen the difference because we, we it's, and it's a noticeable difference that is worth bringing to your attention. And that's always my, my goal in this podcast is to shed light maybe on topics that are not available um, in the mainstream. So that's what we're doing. So thank you. I look forward to um, hopefully see you at the next biohacking conference in person. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to talk about which ones we're, we're both going to be at in the future. There's right. one. There's so up. many. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you again for your time. Thank you, everybody listening. If this episode was helpful, feel free to share it to a friend, to a mom, some or a mom to be anybody that you think would benefit from hearing this information. Um, and as always, I look forward to see you again next week. The information shared on this podcast is for information purposes only and doesn't provide any medical advice. Vanessa Grutman does not cure, diagnose, or treat disease. Please consult your physician before trying any new protocol or product. 